So Family Network and Disabilities is a statewide project. We work from Pensacola down to the Florida Keys. Um, so I'm gonna jump in and talk about a couple of our um, programs, how we support families, and then um, how you can reach out and contact us. So Family Network on Disabilities is family-driven 501c3. What does that mean? In order to work for FND, you have to either be a person with a disability or have a child or a close relative with a disability. So we work off of a peer network, a peer system. Um, so when you call into FND, you are going to speak to someone who has lived your experience, who has, um, you know, had experience with an IEP, with their own child, with um, someone who has a child with medical needs, with mental health needs. Those are the types of experiences that you're going to have when you speak to one of our parent training coordinators. Um, we're a 501c3 nonprofit. So we were founded over 35 years ago by a group of parents in someone's living room trying to improve the educational outcomes for their children with disabilities in the public school system. And since then, it has grown into a large network across the state of, um, of different projects that I'm going to go over. So what, what we don't do, we do not act as attorneys, doctors, and mental health professionals. That's what we don't do. What we do do is we provide information, resources, support, and training. The mission of the FND is to strive for the complete integration and equality of persons with disabilities in a society without barriers and to strive um, and to serve families of children with disabilities ages birth through 26 who have the full range of disabilities described in IDEA. And really our mission and what we do has grown and evolved. And not only do we serve all persons with disabilities um, ages birth through 26 as described under IDEA, um, we also have programs that focus on mental health and medical health. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. So these are our various programs across the state. We have Poppin, PSN, and Penn. All three of those are our um, uh, parent training information centers. And then Family Star is our Family to Family Health Information Center. So F2F HIC. But here in Florida, we just call it Family Star. We also have the FND Trust Services. FND's Trust Services is one of the largest in the country. Um, and if you'd like to speak to someone about the trust services, just give us a ring. Um, we have a separate side of the house that deals with that. It's uh, separate from our federally funded programs. Then we have our Dadvocate Initiative. And the Dadvocate Initiative was really developed to make sure that fathers were actively engaging in the educational process, that they had a support network that they can turn to and really speak to speak to other fathers about what they're going through. So here's a better representation of our projects, okay? So Poppin, which is the, um, again, the North Florida PTI, um, they go all the way down into part of Central Florida. So all the way across North Florida, from the Panhandle over to the coast, and then down into parts of Central Florida. Now, these regions are new. Um, for many of you who've known FND for a long time, um, we had Poppin, which stopped about here, then PSN, which stopped about here, and it was just a straight band across the state, and then Penn was everything south of Lake Okeechobee. Now, um, we rewrote for our federal grants over the summer, and then we were reawarded them and the grant regions shifted quite a bit. So now PSN hugs the West Coast, Penn hugs the East Coast down into the Keys and then goes up into the Orlando area. And then Family Star is our statewide program that covers Pensacola down to the Keys. Now, if you would, if you would like to call us, our contact information is 800-825-4000. 
800-825-5736. Again, 800-825-5736. Um, and that's very, very easy to reach out. I'm going to talk to you in just a moment about what you're going to expect when you give us a call. So what is a PTI? Um, it's a Parent Training Information Center. We are funded by the U.S. Department of Education um, under the Office of Special Education Programs. And many programs like Project 10, um, SEDNET, Fiddlers, they are all uh, discretionary projects from the state, the Florida Department of Education. Um, FND is a discretionary project from the U.S. Department of Education, so at the federal level. Um, we are authorized, the PTIs are authorized inside of IDEA. The last time it was authorized was 2004. Um, so we are written into federal law that every state must have a parent training information center. What is an F2F? An F2S F is a family to family health information center. Um, the F2F here in Florida is again, the Family Star Program, and that is funded directly from HRSA under HHS, which is inside the Department of Health. We help families who have um, understand and navigate systems for their child with special health care needs and mental health challenges. So how do we do this? Um, we work in the community in a number of different ways. So we will work with family members um, via phone, email, in person, Zoom, um, whatever makes the most sense for that family member. And we want to make sure what we often say is, you know, we are working um, what in the best way, the easiest way that makes sense for that family. So um, currently, we're only working over the phone and virtually with COVID. However, hopefully later this year, we'll be able to go back to meeting parents back in the community and in person. But really, it's whatever's most convenient for that family member or that professional that's seeking resources. Um, one of the things that we love, love, love doing is going to resource fairs, going to in-person meetings, um, hosting presentations, hosting conferences, all of those things that we are able to disseminate and give information to the community. Um, and again, hopefully we'll be able to go back to some of those in-person events, in-person presentations and resource fairs, but I have to commend everyone. Um, the districts, the school districts, the, um, the organizations that are working in tandem to the amounts of virtual resource fairs, of webinars, of virtual conferences, you know, it just, this community really has picked up and been able to move forward in spite of everything that has happened this year. And I applaud that, that effort and that success. Um, and then um, one of our, our other key functions is really that dissemination of information. So we do um, individual assistance, dissemination of information, and training um, as webinars, conferences, and person training. So the dissemination of information, I'm going to go to that in just a few moments, um, but we have access to highly vetted resources, information from TA centers, from the departments of ed, from everywhere um, through our network base. I'm going to talk about why that's important in just a moment. Now, technical assistance and training. So FND offers technical assistance to districts, to organizations um, on a variety of different topics. Um, dispute resolution at the lowest level, um, effective communication, um, how to build an IEP with SMART goals, um, really, you know, how to navigate resources, um, transition, just a lot of different avenues. Um, you know, the core functions of IDEA, there's a lot of different avenues that we can provide technical assistance in to district staff and then to organizational staff. You can see here through the graphic representation um, what our core values are in how we represent or how we view the team partnership. So the child is at the center of everything we do. The child should be at the center of every IEP meeting. 
then surrounding that child is the family, the community, and the school, making sure that they are able to achieve the best outcomes that they can with the appropriate supports in place. And that's really where, um, where all of us come into play. Now, best practices and evidence-based practices. Um, this is what I was alluding to just a moment ago. Um, as a discretionary project from the US Department of Education, we have access to technical assistance centers, um, dear colleague letters, tab papers, um, highly vetted information that we break down for families and help them understand. We want to make sure that we are giving the um, the best information that we can at a high level, but we also want to make sure that the federal statutes, the federal information matches with Florida statutes, rules, and regs. Um, Florida has actually implemented a number of additional um, pieces of statute over the years that go above and beyond what IDEA says in certain circumstances. So the information we provide, we want to make sure it matches with state Fed, uh, state rules, regs, and then um, is able to be implemented at the county level. Resources and practical strategies. So when a family calls into us, again, um, they're going to speak to someone who is the parent of a child with a disability, someone who has been in their shoes, who has gone to IEP meetings, who has really had to work for their child's education. Um, so when we're talking about practical strategies, you know, we're not going to give you a huge stack of papers and say, read through all of this, and it's all educational jargon and academic speak that's not um, going to assist you in your child's educational environment. You know, we're going to talk to you about what um, what's worked for our staff, what's worked for other families that we've talked to. Um, what does the research say? Absolutely, that's really important because research-based models are there for a reason, um, but then how do you practically implement some of those research-based models? And then where do you go to understand the more complex systems and complex sets of information that you need to learn as a parent? So these are some of the resources that we've developed. Again, taking what we've done here is we've taken these huge um, research or uh, resource documents from the Department of Ed at the federal state level, um, from academic research, from uh, best practice researches, and we've condensed it into these graphic representations um, of the information. So you'll see each of these um, each of these areas is a series of graphics. So when you click into each of these, you'll see anywhere from 10 to 20 different graphics. And then we have a one pager that summarizes all that information into one. Um, it's really important to us to understand how families want to receive information. So making sure that um, it is, it's, it's a, a visual representation of the information, you know, if you hand someone a, a sheet of paper, a white sheet of paper, completely filled top to bottom with text, are they going to read it? Is that going to make sense? Um, is that going to be visually engaging? So not only do we want these graphics and these, these series to be visually engaging and appealing, we want families to know that they are represented in our organization through the work that we're doing. So we represent all families across the state of Florida. And you'll see that in our materials through the images that we select and then the languages that we offer. So um, all of these resources are available in English and Spanish and the vast majority of our resources are available in English, Spanish, Haitian, Creole, Portuguese, Russian. Um, so five different languages. Um, so check out fmbusa.org backslash ESE download to be able to access that. We did the same concept utilizing Department of Health information, both at the state federal level um, to, to provide resources um, targeted on healthcare and mental health resources as well. 
So something that we experience a lot here in Florida is disasters. We have a lot of natural disasters. So FND partnered with one of the Centers for Independent Living in developing the FND transition or the FND disaster readiness guides. Um, we have our disaster supply kit and then our more comprehensive expanded version of the disaster readiness guide. Now, both of these are offered digitally on our website as well as in print. Um, the, the guides are really set up with, I have a loved one with a disability here in Florida specifically, what do I need to know? You know, can I shel should I be sheltering in place? What do I need to think about if I'm going to shelter in place? What are options if we end up needing to evacuate? You know, a special needs shelter is not actually a place for many, many people. It, it typically does not um, work for someone with complex medical needs. Um, and so we want to make sure that families are understanding these different things, when to plan, how to plan, how to execute your plan, all of those different areas. And then our resources section. So again, we have um, a variety of different areas on our website to get special education downloads, special healthcare downloads. We have a social story bank, a sound bank, and then, y también nosotros tenemos recursos en español. Entonces, y también todos los, todos los otros proyectos tenemos a alguien quien se puede hablar español. Entonces, necesitas algo, llamar nosotros con este número aquí y podremos ayudar. So all of our resources are available in English and Spanish as well. Our social media channels, I highly, highly recommend. Check out our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter accounts. Um, we are constantly pushing out high quality, well vetted, easy to understand resources for families and go snag them. You know, if you're an organization or a district and you want to share out our resources, um, you want to um, share the resources directly to families, absolutely go ahead and utilize them um, free of cost. Everything we do is free of cost for families and districts. And then finally, I just want to say thank you for being here and listening to my presentation. You can reach us at 800-825-5736. 800-825-5736. Shoot us an email at FND, Frank Nancy David, at FNDUSA.org. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you.